So we're almost at the end, part four, and we want to have some light act uh, live action, some sleight of hand about volatility and market sentiment. And this is usually during the Q&As uh, when we're trying to fill the whole uh, theoretical background with a little bit of life here. What can you see here? We spoke about volatility cones earlier and what I've done here is simply I looked every time I prepared a presentation and that's the random element I bring into this whole uh, scenario. Uh, I calculated or I looked at the VIX uh, at the current volatility levels and calculated the volatility cone. Then the next presentation or event came and when I was updating my files, I looked again at the VIX at this point in time and constructed a volatility cone. And uh, a couple of months later, I did the same and constructed a new volatility cone. You can already see to the degree of the extension where the volatility was low at this point or was high at this point. Here, for example, you have a very high volatility that was after the uh, Christmas massacre in 2018. So the volatility cone at this point is widening a lot. So what am I going to do with all this information? Obviously, now I have one, two, three, four observational points, but it could be Many more could be over a longer time period and could not be like this in almost quarterly, but it could be a random point. So sleight of hand, I went in there and thought, okay, let's build an average out of all these different observations because all these different observations represent how the market thought at this point in time, future volatility is going to be. Yeah. So simply have a look at this random uh, samples I took what the market expected, how the volatility cones look and what might be possible. By building these average then, I arrived at something like this and uh, it's of course, it's the, the, the middle between highs and lows and uh, the further I go out, the more data I have avail available. At the, be at the beginning I have one sample, um, then I have two, then I have three, then I have four. And building the average out of these cones gives me the straight line because this time I was just looking for the middle. And then I thought, Ooh, wow, I love percentages. I have something from uh, the count in the Sesame Street in me. So let's rank that. Let's build a scale and see if I go from minus 500 to plus 500 in the top 20% and the lowest 20%, um, how would this compare to the S&P? This volatility, the, dis the difference between the average we just compiled and the price chart of the S&P. Look, how far have we deviated from the average of these cones to the upside and from the average to these cones to the downside. And there's something interesting you can see every time when we ran into the top 20% or in the low 20%. Here we have the S&P against this on adjusted closing terms. Then the S&P did something very, very strange. And it did that after we already moved into the zone of plus minus 20% in our sleight of hand quickly assembled indicator with not too much thought behind it besides the simple fact that the market gives assumptions represented, represented through the volatility of the VIX and we build an average and then we benchmark this average against the distance to the S&P we have in there and then we looked at the top 20% and the lowest 20% to get an idea how far off are we on the average expectations the guys on the street who put their money on the table to invest actually have out there. And to my surprise, even with four data sets, uh, I found uh, that the moment we've reached, the distance became too big between where the market actually trades and where the volatility cones over this period said it should trade, we went into danger territory. This danger territory obviously also coincided with, I don't have a slide for that here, but with a, a phase transition we could see. When we moved out of one period into the next period, yeah, when the market was from highly structured, showing first signs of becoming random and we were at high peak levels here in the top 20% of these volatility bands, the distance to the average, it was never a good sign for the overall market. 
And uh, downside is true as well, obviously. You can see here we've reached it once in this scenario. Uh, after the December uh, 2018 mini crash, let's call it that way, uh, the indication was here, no, we've deviated too far from the general average expectations of market participants taken in random sample. Even though then the, uh, the alpha indicator was still in highly... Uh, um, um, highly random markets but it started turning as well and the moment that happened you could have gone long and you might have had still a nice part of this rally what the future holds you can see it here um, the volatility cones um, gave the prediction that the market sees strong strong resistance between 3200 and 3400 we moved into a zone where uh, volatility cones on the top side all of them at different observation periods said no the market is not giving a probability uh, 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 beyond 68 percent that we will eventually trade there yeah everything said we will trade in this cone but we will not go over the 68 percent and that was with all sorts of volatilities over a variety of times priced in so uh, if you want to do the numbers or simply want to have a look at volatility, it's easy, homemade with a simple Excel sheet. Look at different points of volatility, go in the past or even better, roll a dice, say I want to look at this date, that date, this date, randomly and build these running cones, build an average out of it and you get a pretty good indication in which current situation we are and whether the market in its wisdom of a hive mind actually sees some big resistance levels on the top or some big support levels on the downside. Recommendations, as always, I uh, spoke a lot about theory today um, and I've tried to put a little bit of practical applications at the end. Uh, these are the books I can recommend. Uh, obviously, classics, A Random Walk Down Wall Street, uh, Simply Complexity, Irrational Exuberance by Schiller and Narrative Economics, which I think is something fascinating because to a degree it starts explaining where volatility comes from. Then the Bible of Option Traders is obviously Option Volatility and Pricing by Sheldon Natenberg. I've read many books about option theory and practical applications. Uh, it still takes the cookie and all my trainees and all my traders had that uh, on their desk uh, it was the best book to explain how volatility works, what trades you put on, what's the Greeks uh, uh, involvement in the whole scenarios you can build up, how do markets react and um, strong recommendation from my side obviously. And if you want to see the funny side of trading, traders, guns and money, fantastic or reminiscence of a stock operator by uh, Edwin Lefebvre or better known as Jesse Livermore uh, will entertain you without any doubt. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little presentation in four parts now. And if you would like to contact me, uh, send me, pop me an email at uh, the email address you see on the screen. And I just say thank you. It was a pleasure to be your guest, even though it was only online in the times of Corona. Uh, I hope we we'll see you one day in person. Have a lovely and successful trading period after Corona in front of you. Thank you very much.